Hello and welcome to this session. Here what we are going to learn is how to integrate Excel with Python using Excel Wings. Using Excel Wings is uh, one of the best, if not the best way to go back and forth between Python and Excel. So in Excel Wings we will be using four objects. These are the main four objects. It is app, book, sheet, and a range that allows us to do most of the things uh, we need as you will see. Okay, so first of all, uh, what you need is to, uh, to install Excel Wings if it's already not installed. Here I'm using a Jupyter Lab within uh, Anaconda and uh, as we discussed in the previous session, if you install Anaconda, it comes with a lot of packages pre-installed and Excel Wings and Pandas are uh, the two uh, most important that we will be using here and it comes with uh, Anaconda pre-installed. If you're not using uh, Anaconda then and it's not installed in your computer, these ones you will have to install it using pip install for example. Okay, so uh, so we need uh, Excel Wings and Pandas and we import it uh, here so that's XW and PD, these are just the, the conventions when we use Excel Wings and Pandas among the community. So now, uh, here on this side, as you see, I have the stock prices, information about the stock price of uh, Tesla since uh, 2016 up to, uh, to the most recent days, uh, 21st of uh, January 2021. So here's just, uh, this is the opening price uh, that day and uh, the high high, uh, low and the closing price. This is actually the price that we will be using uh, here and you should be using if you are using uh, some analysis with the prices and here's the volume of the, uh, the trade. So first of all, what we need is to connect to the the workbook that we have and and here we define it workbook as as just assign a name for it and we use the x uh, l wings as uh, we mentioned before we just uh, define it as xw here and then we use the book object and have to pass the name of the the file in here my file is the same in the same folder as these codes so therefore i don't need to pass the path of it if it's not you have to add uh, the path to it as well so here uh, when i run this and this is also an introduction to jupyter notebook and jupyter lab since we have not talked about it much these are each of these cells are codes uh, in a way and sometimes i can write as you see some comments etc in in here so he, uh, when i want to run a cell that includes codes i can have shift enter when I'm using uh, Windows, or of course, you know, there are these, these ways you can, through the menu, you can do it as well, but if you want to do it uh, with keyboard, it's shift and enter, okay? So now I, I am running this line of the code, and I can see now that if I just say workbook, this is going to be this workbook that I have got, and it shows me the, indeed, that's the, the object that I have uh, T S L A uh, X L S X. Okay. Now I remind you that if I don't have the extension here, okay, so and I run it, it's gonna give me an error that no such file exists. So it's very important that you add the extension in here. Okay, the beauty of uh, this Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab is that essentially I can run each of these lines and it shows me a uh, uh, in a very nice way, interactively, the output. So now, uh, if I want to go to the sheets, because a, a workbook may have a lot of sheets, uh, I can uh, run this dot sheets, that's the objects in here, that it uh, gives me also which kind of, uh, how many sheets ex ex exist here. Now I have only one, of course, it shows me TSLA, that's the only sheet. And if I was saying sheet count, it would show me how many sheets exist in my 
Excel sheet. Okay, so so that's that's the way that we can understand you know how many sheets exist. And now if we want to access one of those sheets, now again remember I have only one sheet in here. Uh, but if I want to access that and I have a lot of sheets, so th there are two ways. Either you can use just the integer and it starts from zero. Zero is the first one, and then one, two, three, etc. I can do that, or I can just uh, refer to the name of it. Okay, so here let's let's first uh, just use the list in here. So I, I am all I'm saying I'm saying that the sheets zero is gonna be uh, called Tesla sheet and just print the Tesla sheet. So here's as you see uh, TSLA. So that's essentially I am giving this a name to this sheet which is called TSLA sheet. Okay, so now I can also add a new sheet by easily just uh, saying that you know this is my workbook and call this uh, objects and then add new. So this is going to add a new sheet to this work uh, workbook that I have and if I run this says uh, you will see that is just the new sheets added as I do that as you see interactively you can easily see it in here what's going on and uh, it also of course shows me here that I have now new and then the next one is TSLA. So as we discussed, we can refer uh, to this uh, sheet uh, also uh, basically instead of a zero as you saw there I can say uh, the new sheet, new sheet call W, the new, the new, the sheet that is named new, call it new sheet. Of course, I can say to show me this new sheet, and you see it's uh, in this file, TSLA, Excel. SX and it's called a uh, new that state sheet. So now uh, we see we have two sheets and in here also there are two sheets. We can delete each of these sheets if needed. So I, I can I can uh, delete the new sheets by just running a new sheet uh, dot delete and that will be deleting the new sheet and I will be left with only one sheet. Okay, so, so that's that's the essentially the way we can connect and get the sheets data. Now we want to learn how to read and, and write into the Excel file in an interactive way. Okay, so that we can go back and forth easily. So now uh, one object that I mentioned is, is range we can be using. So we can say that's remember this was the name of the sheet. That's Tesla sheets and if I say range A1 what is going to give me and I am asking for the value so what is going to give me is A1 the value in A1 okay and that's exactly date as you, you can see in here. Now what if we want to have the whole row in here okay so I can use now the same syntax and add expand right Okay, so that's that is gonna give me from A1 to exp expand it till all, all the way to the right. Okay, so as you see now, this gives me uh, all the first row. And of course, I could do expand down that it will get A1 goes till the whole way down. Let's try it. And you see, okay, it goes uh, for all the data, of course. And now imagine I want to change one of these uh, these uh, values that I see here. Let's say if I want to change a, a uh, F, F1, let's say, uh, that's uh, the adjusted uh, close, but I just want to call it a price to know what I am seeing really. And if I run this, you will see adjusted close is, is uh, changed to price, okay? And now uh, there's one thing you need to know if, if I am asking for the value of a cell and that doesn't exist, it's just a missing value, it's going to return none, okay? So if I am asking, for example, the, the, the range A10, you see it's obviously not uh, missing. And if I say whether it's uh, none, which means missing or not, it should return false. 
which is uh, returning false. And if I am asking for H10, which is obviously sh should be missing, it should give me true. So that's uh, true. So that's easy. Sometimes you want to check whether uh, the cell has some values or, or not. Now, uh, again, if I wanted to read a bunch of these things is a, in a two dimension, let's say A1, 2C3. So you see in, in this uh, path, if I wanted to, to do that, I can just uh, pass the, uh, the dimension A1, 2C3, the values to give me. And it, as you see, it gives me these values. And you probably notice that it gives me the list within the list. So each of the rows are going to be in a list. And all of this is going to be a, in an exterior uh, big list giving to me okay so now this is not typically what is very useful for us what we will be using a lot is with the, uh, the data frame and it's excel wings it's going to give us easily a data frame using the option of a panda and as you see in here we have uh, this is what what we wrote uh, let's say a1 c3 See the same as before, and I can add the options PD that's the panda that I defined it as PD before, and data frame that value. If I just pass this option, it's gonna give me a nice, easy uh, data frame. Okay, I can, of course, have here, uh, let's say to E3 or let's say E5, see in a bigger one it shows me exactly these these numbers okay and obviously if i here i am asking for a1 to e5 but i may and usually we want the whole data how do we do it as we discussed so you have a1 and you ask for the expand and you don't say right or down and in if you don't pass anything in here it's going to automatically and by default go to the right and to the down so essentially it's going to get all the data here and we pass the option here of the data frame to give us the data frame and we ask it to to show uh, this data frame to us and you see that uh, it shows all the data here uh, on the and the all the columns since it's it's not so many and on the on the rows there are so many so it shows us at the beginning and at the towards the end of the data it's, it's telling us that there's uh, uh, 1,259 rows and six columns uh, in here and we can get that kind of things by the df that's the data frame that we have in here which is essentially our our data and uh, dot shape here it gives us exactly the the dimension of our data we can also by saying head four for example show us the first four uh, rows in the data or we could ask for a range let's say from 90 to 105 uh, four that's you know the 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 rows in between here okay so that's you can inspect the data look at the data and so on now we are going to uh, do some plotting easy plotting and then we are gonna go through how to really you know change some values within there so for plotting we can use easily import the matplotlib pyplot here we, we we import it as plt again is the convention and all i need is to define you know what i am going to plot it's super easy so here i have the my data frame and i am defining this uh, before it was adjusted close now it's uh, it's called price so i'm asking now this data frame which is the price in here uh, and to plot it uh, for me so here i'm just show, uh, asking the the y label to be price and the chart uh, it's called uh, Tesla stock price. Okay, so let's run that. Oh, sorry, if I didn't run this. PLT. And now I see here the Tesla stock price from 2016 up, up to now. You see how it's been developing. So I have now the plot. One thing that I can do is to basically save it in this TSLA fig by the option get figure. Okay, I do that. And now 
there is one step before we can have the plot in Excel file that we have here and I can define that uh, on the sheets, the active sheets, the pictures add this TSLA figure, so Tesla figure that I have in here. So if I run that, I will have it here on my Excel sheet and I can move it of course around, okay? So that's that's super easy to to have that and if I if we change things and we run it it's going to be updated automatically. So now there are a few things that I, I need to highlight before uh, the end of this introduction. Most of the things we will be doing is related to, in fact, not the, the type of data I was showing uh, you, but mostly on, uh, on financial models. So we have these kind of financial models uh, where uh, typically the, the values are in percentage, in, in dollars and so on. We want to get some part of this data, we work on it, so somehow and, and then change things, etc. So we will see in the next session how we want to do these things, but it's very important to see how Python treats this kind of stuff. There are, there are a few things you have to be careful about. So for example, here let's, let's add in H, let's say H2, I am adding uh, $12, uh, so that's the value I'm going to be adding, H12, uh, so it's going to be added somewhere here, let's run that, oh sorry, H2 was it, so yeah, so here we, we see H2, $12, okay, so now let's assign this value uh, to uh, to name price and then we, sh we ask Python to show us a price and as you see it shows us decimal uh, 12 so that's uh, bringing uh, this uh, as a decimal uh, object in a way so if I want to do now uh, some uh, computation with this price so imagine I want to add uh, 2.5 to that price it's going to give me an error okay so the way to, to deal with these things is that whenever you bring this sort of values, you have to first convert it to float, okay, and then we can ask to show us the price, and it's going to be now 12, then you can use uh, the, the variables uh, in computations, formulas, etc. Okay, so that's, that's one thing, now I can this was 12, you see H2, so I can just completely remove it and it's gone, okay? Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that, so le let's see whether, if I have 12%, how does Python brings it? So let's say it's H, so this is H3, And if I don't do the float, as you see, it, it works well. So with, with the percent, it's going to be fine. With the accounting formatting, you will have some issues. You have to convert it to float and then work with it. Uh, okay, so the last thing is that when you manipulate some Excel files, you may want to save it. I can save this uh, book to a new a file, Excel file called Tesla new. And if I run that, I'm gonna get, book is not defined because indeed uh, it was called work uh, book. Okay, uh, so now if I go to the file, I will have TSLA new, yes, uh, that's the folder. That's, this is the TS Tesla file I started. This is Tesla new that I, I saved my file here. And now I can basically quit the apps that I have here. It's just showing me which apps are active right now. And in this, this Excel that is active, I can quit it. And uh, as you see, it closes it down for me and I am done. Okay, so, so that's the uh, quick introduction to 
Excel wings and how we can use Python to, uh, to manipulate things from Excel, go back and forth to Excel. And uh, for the next sessions, what we will be doing is that uh, we will be working with financial models. Uh, we have some financial models that we have some inputs. We want to change, for example, those inputs uh, and see what happens to the output to, to try to plot those things, uh, simulate our valuation models and so on. Uh, we will see how how that works and you will see that it's a super easy using Python to do many improvements for our financial models. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you next session.